why I find that building web applications is very interesting is its reach is reach and the capabilities that you can put into them are infinite. And one of the really cool things about uh, web applications is because of that infinite reach, you can basically carve off a piece of the world and say, we are going to solve this. Uh, come to us that we, you know, we have tackled this part of the solution for you that you could build upon. And I thought, how hard could this be? Ruby on Rails, I did hear some things about it. Maybe it's a little immature and not as good as Java, but I decided to look into it. And when I did, I found this amazing framework that was able to, to take me to where I would get to Java in much longer and write much more code in much fewer steps. And I thought that was pretty amazing. I think what I like about AngularJS is that uh, it allows developers to uh, develop the web applications on the client side very quickly, but at the same time, it doesn't sacrifice the correctness of design and correctness of architecture. So in the last few years, uh, MongoDB and Ruby on Rails have become you know, extremely popular and there has been a wide industry acceptance and vendor acceptance on these technologies. And Ruby and Mongo you know, have reached a so-called uh, a sweet spot or melting point, so to speak. Students will find this class to be very interesting because everything is about the web. Accessing it, using information in uh, interesting and valuable ways, and getting your ideas implemented quickly uh, and out to people. And Rails is exactly that. Take like the Twitters of the world. You know, they're taking a lot of the responsibility for getting information out uh, to people, whether they be critical world events or soccer practices late tonight. You know, the same technology is a bit in there. One of the cool things about this specialization is it's going to take the student through and say, here's how you build a lot of these things. Here are a lot of the decisions that you have to make. Here's how these things come together. And you can, build, you can put yourself in a, a situation of being able to build applications like those. So I think how Ruby on Rails is different than a lot of bigger uh, web development frameworks out there is that Ruby on Rails is really all about rapid prototyping. Let me give you an analogy. Imagine you have this amazing idea. You wake up in the morning, you jot the idea down on a napkin, and you run to a big bank because your idea needs about $50,000 to borrow for it to succeed. And you're met by a, a fancy clerk in a big bank, and the clerk says, well, we need a business plan. You can't just have a bunch of points on a napkin and it's going to take three or four months to be able to process the idea and maybe it will prove you, maybe it won't approve you. And you're devastated. You're like, this is a great idea, you don't understand. And the clerk says, no, I'm sorry, rules are rules. And you run out of a bank and you go to a small bank and the person in the small bank looks over your points on a napkin and he says, you know what, I think we'll go for it. And he just goes to a back room and comes out with money and gives you money and you're able to start your idea on that same day and three months down the line, you are able to really develop the idea and you start making money. So to me, Ruby on Rails is that small bank, right? It's that idea of rapid prototyping that the time to market is much faster. With a bigger framework, it might take you a year and your idea might succeed, it might not succeed, you never know. But with a small framework like Ruby on Rails, that also enables you to do rapidly, to rapidly prototype, you're able to quickly develop your idea, ship it, and that's actually exactly what happened to Twitter. Twitter used Ruby on Rails, and Twitter got big pretty fast, and it was able to develop its idea quickly. So we built this specialization to consist of five courses. Course one is gonna be teaching you the basic flow of how the information comes in and being able to build an application that is a functional application. In course two, we are gonna actually use a database and learn about how to interact with a database. That's gonna be course two. 
So, so MongoDB is a uh, document-oriented open source database uh, which basically lets you store JSON documents and it also has a lot of advantages like it's highly scalable, highly available and gives you a lot of these things right out of the box. So in course 3 we'll talk about MongoDB and you know, open source uh, document-oriented database and implementation of NoSQL database and uh, we'll also look into how MongoDB fits in well with uh, Ruby on Rails and lets you build really lightweight, but at the same time, large-scale, scalable applications. So, so many of the large companies like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, you know, these companies use REST API quite a bit, uh, integrating REST API with their lightweight web framework to get the data, display the data on, on the web application. It's a very common practice that you see out there in the industry today. As full-stack uh, web developers, we need to understand that no matter how great our server-side code is and no matter how fast we developed it, if we developed it in Ruby on Rails and kind of gave our product out, uh, out the door very quickly, what the user is going to end up seeing is they're going to end up seeing the front end. That's what they interact with. And if the user interaction, the user experience is not good, then all the glory of the server-side is really going to be kind of lost. So in course number four, we're going to concentrate on the technologies that is really the lifeblood of every web application, and that is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. By the end of course four, you'll be able to take a design or even an idea for a design and turn it into a real website. So AngularJS is a uh, open source framework developed and backed by Google uh, that addresses a lot of the issues with front-end web development and simplifies web development. Uh, that you're able to actually push out your products out the door much faster uh, and easier. So by the end of course five, you'll be able to build a full web application where majority of the functionality will actually live on the client side and you'll be able to push out that product very quickly using AngularJS framework. The student in the class is not going to be alone in their workshop building code and uh, turning it in in a vacuum they're going to be able to post early on in the courses uh, their solutions to the web. And as we add technologies and add capabilities, they'll be able to add those to those applications available for many to see. So they'll be able to show their family, their friends, their coworkers, their employers, their future, co their future employers, it, depending on what the case may be. They'll be able to share in a very uh, quick and open manner uh, a lot of the work they've been uh, working on. And by the end of the overall capstone, you will have completed a full back-end, front-end, managed in Gits, deployed to Heroku, uh, full web application that you're able to uh, sit back and proudly advertise to all your friends, family, co-workers, and uh, employers.